Is the Fed working on a digital dollar? I mean, technology has made this a possible thing. And so we feel it's our obligation to understand it. How would it work? What would the features of it be? There are many subtle and difficult policy choices and design choices that you'd have to make. We're doing all that work. We have not made a decision to do this because, again, the question is, will this benefit the people that we serve? And we need to answer that question well. Silver Joker here. Okay, so is CBDCs going to limit or eliminate our access or ability to purchase physical metals? I mean, that is the question that is forming in the physical silver stacking community right now. There's a lot of people who have made videos and talk about this issue of CBDCs severely altering our ability to stack physical metals. And they point to uh, EBT, the food assistance program, food stamps here in America, how that's strictly regulated, how you know that if you get EBT, if you get food assistance, you can only buy food. Now, I don't know exactly what you can buy with EBT, but I've been in the line behind some people who are using that in the grocery store, and I've watched them be told that there are certain items they cannot purchase because it's not an approved item that they can buy. Now that is in the cashier's computer. So obviously it's on the card somewhere. So in a, in a sense, that is already a digital currency. EBTs are a digital currency and they're strictly regulated. So if we go to CBDCs, the fear is that they could do the same thing with targeted purchases for us as physical metal stackers. If the central banks who are issuing this digital currency see individuals ownership of physical metals being a threat to their digital currency then the fear is that they could easily eliminate your ability to buy physical metals because they are issuing and they're managing the central bank digital currency and so just like with an ebt card there are certain purchases they will not allow. So let's say for instance, they want to kind of curb alcohol use for whatever reason, or they want to eliminate tobacco use, then they could target those things, either eliminate them altogether or have certain days or certain amounts or something like that. Or even if they determine that a individual has an issue with alcohol abuse or something like that, they could target that individual specifically for alcohol purchases or tobacco purchases. The third way we think CBDC can improve financial inclusion is through what we call programmability. That is, CBDC can allow government agencies and private sector players to program, to create smart contract, to allow targeted policy functions, for example, welfare payment, for example, consumption coupon, for example, food stamp. By programming CBDC, those money can be precisely targeted for what kind of people can own and what kind of use this money can be utilized. Now keep in mind, this is strictly speculation. Now, these are just some of the concerns that I've heard voiced I've come across some people who have voiced these concerns, but really they're still just fantasy because there's there's no CBDCs right now and there's really haven't released any way that they would use them other than to say that it's going to replace our current physical banknotes. Currencies have changed a few times in our country. You know, the banknotes that we use now at a, there was a time when they were backed by physical metal, physical gold. And there were times when they were, when the treasury would issue certificates, silver and gold certificates, where you could redeem those certificates for the equivalent amount of physical metals. And so the federal government stopped that. They stopped backing our currency with physical metals, and they stopped 
issuing silver certificates. And so a lot of people believe that those, the times of getting physical money for the fiat currency that we have is over. But I'm here to tell you that I trade in government issue banknotes all the time for physical metal. And if you buy gold and silver, so do you. I take this fiat currency and I turn that in for physical metals, real money. And so the same thing is going to happen with digital currency. You know, that digital currency is not going to alter our ability to make purchases. And the amount of gold and silver that us as private individuals, us as stackers, take out of the enormous amount of gold and silver that's out there is minuscule. The idea that our purchases would compete with uh, central bank digital currencies, I believe, is misplaced. We just don't do enough. Our purchases don't amount to a threat to digital currencies. I mean, that's how I see it. That's my opinion. I could very easily see them using central bank digital currencies to manage the economy. All right, so picture the stimulus program, a stimulus program that is so often implemented in this country where they just put a whole bunch of money out there into the economy, hoping that people use it to buy goods and services and stimulate or boost the economy. All right, right now it's like a shotgun when they do that. Hopefully enough pellets hit the target to where they accomplish the goal that they're trying to accomplish. Well, CBDCs would be more like a sniper rifle where the federal government could target specifically the stimulus payment and then they could regulate what you do. They could control when you spend it. They could say there's a time limit, use it or lose it in 90 days. They could limit your purchases just to retail purchases. Uh, goods and services, you couldn't invest it, you couldn't put it in the bank and save it. Those kind of things would give them a lot more control over the intended purpose of the stimulus. And I could very easily see them doing that because then they got almost 100% of that stimulus going towards buying goods and services to boost the economy. Look, I want you to please keep in mind that this is all just speculation. This is hypotheticals based on some of the things that I've read and some of the things I've heard and some of the conversations I've had with like-minded people. And so I want you to keep that in mind. The CBDCs are not a thing right now. I think there's a lot of irrational fear when it comes to CBDCs, uh, the whole idea behind what it's going to do and how it's going to be implemented and how much control they're going to have. As human beings, we always imagine the worst possible outcome but there is one thing about CBDCs that I understand does give me some pause. <laughs> and that is because it's managed in a central location, in the central bank. And if something was to go wrong, something catastrophic with the technology or it's hacked or some kind of cyber warfare activity or whatever, that could really be catastrophic for us as individuals if our currency is all in one place. And as a long-term stacker, just the idea of that would really motivate me to stack even more physical silver and be a lot more confident that by stacking physical silver, I'm doing the right thing to protect my financial future. Now, I understand that that could possibly be an irrational fear as well. This is the one that I think is more realistic personally because you hear about it all the time. You hear about big companies being hacked into and people's personal information being stolen and they have to let everybody know. And so that has happened and is currently still happening. And so, you know, that's where I stand on it. Me and Silver5150, you guys, some of you guys know who that is. He's a fellow YouTuber. Uh, he's put his channel on hiatus for now, but the man is very knowledgeable when it comes to the economy and all things investment and stock market. We had a heated debate today about this subject. So I figured I'd come on the mic, share my thoughts with you and tell me what you think. Just leave it in the comments. I mean, are you concerned about CBDCs? Are you doing anything to prepare for the possibility or some people believe the eventuality of CBDCs? And if you are, what are those things? What are you doing? What do you think we should know in the Stable Titan community about 
CBDC's impact on our ability to continue to stack silver. So I'll end this podcast with this. So if you think about it, if you're a long-term stacker, you have been preparing for this all along. (laughs) Because even if the worst imaginable happens and they regulate how much physical metals we can buy with CBDCs if they implement this program, then we're already prepared. And if you are afraid or if you have some concerns that that is going to be the outcome of CBDCs, then now is the time to put as much physical silver in your stack as you can possibly afford. Because look, these digital currencies are still fiat currency. They're still currencies that are backed by nothing. And so that's why we stack physical silver, because we do not want to rely on fiat currencies to be there for us if things should go sideways. We want something outside of this fiat cash. The only real money, the only real promise that's kept is physical metals, as far as I'm concerned. And so if you've stacked a physical silver, then you're doing the right thing. If you are thinking about CBDCs in a very negative way, then you need something outside of those currencies and physical silver, physical metals would be the thing to get. I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm not qualified to do that. I'm just telling you what I do from the experiences I've had and where I see my financial future headed. Anyway, I appreciate you guys stopping by. If you stuck with me this long, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And you know, we're just going to keep this silver train rolling. On my way to see Clay down at Main Street Coin next. We're going to talk to him a little bit. Maybe get his idea if he's willing to share it on CBDCs. Anyway, keep stacking. Peace.